Oh, good day. My name is John, and this is the next in a series of videos that I'm doing on these little Chinese um, diesel air heaters. And the subject of today's video is the glow plug and the atomizing screen. Okay, well, where is it? Well, in the the Ebus Patcher knockoffs, which the, these Chinese copies are. This is the glow plug here um, on the top of the unit. Now these units are designed to be mounted this way. However, if you want to put it in a, um, a, a garage or a cabin, you are permitted to mount them on their side, provided that the glow plug is uppermost. So you can mount it this way, you can put it against the wall here, but the glow plug must be opposite, oh, sorry, uppermost. You must never mount them this way with the glow plug down. Now, the reasons that you, you might have to get the, the glow plug out and clean it and clean in here is the starting reason. These diesel heaters, if they're, as I say over and over again, if they're installed correctly and they're operated correctly and they're maintained correctly, they will give you very little problem. But um, if you have installation errors, uh, you have fuel errors, then you will have starting errors. Now, if these won't start, two things are generally the cause of a, a non-start of the heater. One is a fuel issue, which we'll get into at another time, and the two is the, the start, the glow plug start issue. And what happens is the most common cause of this, um, not so common that the glow plug itself is broken, but mainly the, um, you have carbon build up in the, in the atomizing screen and in the, um, the little um, breather hole, which I'll show you in a second. So how do you get the, um, the glow plug out? With the Ebus Batcher design, you are actually able to do this maintenance task with the heater in situ. You don't have to pull it out. If you've got the Webasto type um, copy, then you have to pull the heater out of the unit. But in any installation um, that you do, you, you should do it so it's easy to remove the heater for maintenance. Okay, to get the, the glow plug out, first we remove the, the electronic part of it, the, the switch. Now, you have to be very careful with this little silicon cover because the glow plug is a ceramic material and it's very fragile so when you hold the hold the the wires here and push push the cover up towards you so you're not putting any strain on the wires in here at all now you have to get yourself some form of um, spanner it's a 12 mil six-sided socket spanner that you require and you have to modify it yourself you can either buy one um, online or make one yourself now it's much cheaper and easier to make it yourself if you go to a plumbing store or a, um, a hardware store these deep socket spanners are sold in the um, the plumbing section you know for, for for tap repairs and maintenance they'll come like this so if you mark a line here and here so what you, what you can do then is just cut that section out, like here, and I've cut this out with a, um, a grinding wheel with a, um, a stainless steel cutoff wheel. And that's a good distance, so it's a nice distance up. So you want it up there about probably 15 millimetres or so to give you a socket, because the reason you can't put it in is because of wiring here. So now what you do is you gently put the socket in and make sure it's it's connected but you've got to be so careful because if you if you are not careful you will snap this um you'll snap this glow plug off okay so it's set there now holding it vertically very very gently just crack it and it's about a quarter of a turn that's all so once you've cracked it then gently remove the socket and then do it by hand very gently because these are very fragile 
and so you remove the glow plug. The next you've got to remove the screen and this is the atomizing screen now that that is in here now there are a couple of ways you can do it if if the screen is really badly carboned up or, or that you can get in here with a little screwdriver and you can you can tease it around and then pull it out with a pair of long nose pliers but if you do it that way then it's broken and it's and it's you won't be able to use it again the other method is to use a, a seven millimeter um, tap and so we we screw in the seven millimeter tap so screw in the tap and then pull the screen out gently and there we have the screen on the tap however I don't use this manner method anymore and what I found is that the tap is a bit sharp and it tends to cut into the screen and you will sometimes um, break little wiring off here so what I use now is I use an 8 millimeter um, coach screw and so when you screw it in you screw in the 8 millimeter coach screw and I find this is a better thing. The other thing, seven millimeter taps are very hard to come by. Um, most bolts that go up in um, um, even sizes, you know, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 sort of millimeters. I've never actually seen a, uh, a seven millimeter bolt, but, and it took me a little bit of effort to get this seven millimeter tap, but it, it's, not, it's not worth using. As I said, it, it tends to cut into the screen. These coach bolts are a dime a dozen, you know, 20 cents or something like that at a hardware store and do a better job on the, removing the screen. Okay, I'll leave this and now I'll come to the um, dismantled unit. And here we have uh, the uh, a dismantled one. Now, this is the glow plug here broken and I won't I won't embarrass the guy who who snapped it off by being a bit too aggressive but these are quite expensive about $30 to replace so when when you consider that this heater here I paid $125 or something for it you know that's nearly the quarter of the cost of uh, the heater by just being a little bit aggressive and snapping it off now if you actually dismantle the heater and you pull it apart then it's much better than to remove the um, the heater, sorry, the glow plug when it's inside the unit, and so then you use a, a 12 millimeter spanner, and what you do is, or what I do is, I grind the ends off a little bit here because to give you movement inside, so we can take this spanner, out, take this um, glow plug out. And take the screen out and as I say I like this method much better now just wriggle it around now if it's got a lot of carbon on it it'll it'll, it'll um, take a bit of wriggling to get it out and there's the screen now why this is important in this um, this whole operation is if you consider the, the glow plug and the screen operate in unison like this if you consider this in a very broad term as a, like a pilot light and how the heater lights this is the diesel comes in here it comes in and the diesel this is here in here like this So it sits in here it is below the hole here and the diesel comes in goes around the outside of the of the um, atomizing screen and the diesel then is atomized now remember we I talked in the past about the little bubbles coming in the dosing pump so these dosing pumps generate little tiny cavitation bubbles they come along the line at regular intervals with the diesel and they actually help those bubbles actually help the atomization of the uh, the diesel the glow plug is in here 
this gets up to red hot first. When it's up to red hot, then the ECU turns on the pump and, and injects diesel fuel in here. The diesel gets atomized here around the screen and it then it burns and it lights and once it once it lights then we have the big burn. But if if this screen is blocked with soot or dirt or or um, you know you've got a, a bug, the it won't light. Now I've shown before this little hole here it's only about three millimeters in, in diameter. In fact, you can just get a matchstick in it. All the starting combustion air has to go through this hole. So if this hit is blocked, you know, you're sucked in a bug, and that's why it's so important to have a filter on the, um, um, on the air intake. And those, those um, I suppose, um, what would you, what you call them, a uh, air intake silence, they are not a filter. All they do is, in fact, they do nothing. And if you see some of my other videos, they, they provide no purpose whatsoever. So you have to have a filter to keep out the bugs. If, if you're in a, um, a dirty area or you, you use the heater while you're driving the vehicle, then you have to have a filter like this to keep out the dirt because you'll be sucking dirt and dust and bugs into here. They will block up this little hole and the heater won't start. Or you'll block up this metering pump with dirt and, uh, and carbon and the heater won't start. So they have to be cleaned before the heater will start. Now, the best way if you've got is buy a new one. And um, this, this, the atomizing screens are quite cheap. You know, you know 80, 80 or 90 cents. And that's, they're the ones I bought here. If, if you have carbon on them and um, you're say you know it's in the midwinter and you're on a road trip or something like that and you the only way you can get the heater going is to clean it well yes you can clean it you can um, you can particularly if you can get access to map gas which is a, uh, a high heat gas much hotter than um, propane and so just by holding it in a pair of pliers and burning it with the map gas you will get most of the um, the carbon out and you'll be able to reuse the uh, the old atomizing screen. Okay, you've opened up your heater. You found that um, you've got uh, bugs in here that you've been able to clean out because you didn't have a filter. You've got carbon which you've been able to remove by by um, burning and cleaning, or you've got dirt and dust in here which came through here and this atomizing screen is full of uh, road dirt and dust and you've, but you've managed to clean it so how do you put it back? You can buy a dedicated insertion tool um, this one is for Eberspatcher but as I say they're exactly the same this, this screen is an Eberspatcher screen and this is the Chinese screen exactly the same so you put that in there put it in and insert it and you must insert it right to the end well this has got a locking mechanism but it must go in past the hole here so when you look in the hole you must not see any screen so put it in and just insert it boom so check that it's not it's in past the hole But most people won't have access to one of those, so I'll just take it out again. Just wriggle it out using my 20 cents coach bolt. And I found that um, a normal lead pencil with a rubber on the end makes a very good insertion tool. The rubber 
is just the right size to go in to the inside of the, the screen. And what I did is I just teased the end out here a little bit, you know, just a tiny bit, just so it grabs the end. Put it in and push it right down as far as it'll go. Looking in the little hole here, that you don't see any screen, so you just see um, pencil or rubber there. And then gently remove it, and there your screen is inserted. Now, then you can insert the, um, the glow plug, and it's all done. But if actually, you'd, you'd reinstall this first and then put the glow plug in. All right, just recapping. The diesel comes in here, gets atomized around this little stainless steel atomizing screen. The glow plug is the igniter, so it ignites the diesel. If you consider this as a, a pilot light, if this doesn't light here, then the burner won't light. There'll be no lighting. All air has to come through here to start the, um, the, uh, the glow plug ignition. If this is blocked up with dead bugs or um, bees or flies or whatever it is, you'll get no air and you won't light. If your screen is covered with soot, carbon or dirt or dust, it won't light. So this is the second, probably most common common uh, common problem with the uh, these diesels not lighting. The other is fuel, and that will be another video. All right, um, I hope that will answer some of your questions, and thank you for watching.